Hey, what's up? In my mind, the 1990s had two major contributions to the world of pizza. The first was eating pizza while watching a scary animatronic rat band. That was cool. And the other was stuffing the crust full of cheese. Since none of us want the first one happening anywhere near where we sleep today, I'm gonna... <laughs> Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a pizza with a bunch of cheese stuffed inside the crust. To get started, I'm gonna grab my stand mixer and into the bowl of that, I'll measure 270 grams of warm water, five grams of instant yeast, 35 grams of sugar, 30 grams of olive oil, and 450 grams of all-purpose flour. I'll mention that my all-purpose flour is 11.7% protein. That's quite strong for all-purpose and it absorbs water really well. I think if you're using a weaker flour, you probably need a touch less water. Lastly, I'll add in 12 grams of salt. Now the dough goes on and I'll mix this on low speed for three minutes or until the dough goes from a clumpy dry mess into a cohesive ball of dough that can actually be kneaded like this. Once we're there, I'll turn the mixer up to high speed and continue to mix this for about three more minutes. After six minutes in total of mixing, when the dough is clear in the bowl and slapping around like this, I'll stop the mixer and give it the old tug test to see how developed the gluten actually is. See how it's not tearing or shearing? That means we're good to go. Next, I'll flip this dough into a medium bowl, pop on a lid, and let it ferment for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, I'll come back and give this dough its one and only strength strength building fold. For that, you guys know the deal at this point. You pull out a grip of the dough, fold it back over, repeat that three to four more times, and from there, I'll round the folded dough into a nice taut little ball by turning and rounding it like this. I've shown this folding move a lot on this channel, so if you feel like I breeze through it too quickly, I'll link to a video down below where I show it in a lot more detail. Once the dough's all folded up like this, I'll cover it again and let it rise for 30 more minutes. 30 minutes later, or 60 minutes since the mix, the dough has risen by a bit, maybe about 30%. We don't want too much gas production for this pizza dough because that leads to structural problems and giant voids in the final crust later on. To set up a landing pad for my dough balls, I'm going to grab a sheet tray and spray it liberally with olive oil pan spray. Feel free to just smear it with some olive oil if that's all you've got. Next, I'll flip my dough out onto my cutting board, or I'll try. Now, using my dough scraper, I'm going to cut this dough into two equal sized pieces that should be about 375 grams each. Once I've got two equal sized pieces of dough, I'm going to grab one of them and then degas it really aggressively. Don't be shy. From there, I'll pull up both sides of the dough and then fold them back over each other like this. Then I'll flip the dough over onto that seam and start rounding to tuck the seam up under the dough. We want some tension here, but don't go too tight with it because that will make the pizza a lot harder to stretch out wide enough to hold all the extra cheese. After we've got both doughs turned into balls like this, I'll wrap the sheet tray tightly with with plastic wrap and then throw the whole thing into the fridge to ferment slowly and mature its flavor for as little as four hours, but preferably like 24 to 48. 24 hours later and 90 minutes before I want to nosh down on some stuffed crust, I'll pull out my dough. Overnight, these gassed up by just a little bit, maybe 25 to 30 percent. For now, I'm going to let these come up to room temperature so that I can comfortably shape them. Cold dough is very tight and snappy. While those warm up, I'm going to bust out the sauce for this pizza. For that, I'll combine 150 grams of tomato paste, two grams of salt, 10 grams of sugar, one gram of black pepper, a big pinch of chili flakes, one gram garlic powder, one gram onion powder, one gram dried basil, one gram dried oregano, 10 grams of olive oil, and finally 150 grams of water. Next, the immersion blender goes in and I'll spin this up for about 15 to 20 seconds or until everything is nicely broken down. Tomato paste might seem like a weird move here, but I just think of it more as like a tomato sauce concentrate. I think this sauce is super easy, it's full of flavor, and just a little bit sweet. It's perfect for this style of pizza and pretty much exactly what most chain soft crust pizzerias are going to be making. One last little bit of prep before we build the pizzas is to grate some cheese. For this style of pizza, I'm using a 3 to 1 blend of full fat mozzarella, though part skim mozz would work if you can't find full fat, and a mild provolone cheese. In my mind, the full fat brings a rich roundness that's pure classic pizzeria, and the provolone has a nice piquant, did I say that right? Piquant edginess to it that is great for cheese stretchiness and is full of flavor. Check the French onion soup video that I did where I topped it with provolone. That's an insane amount of cheese pull. Oh. Once the cheeses are all grated up, I'll set them aside and quickly thank the sponsor of this video, Raycon, for sending me their everyday earbuds. I've been using Raycon's everyday earbuds a lot, mainly for my morning meditations or listening to audiobooks while I'm doing dishes or chores around the house. But I was especially looking forward to trying these out during workouts at the gym because I've had a few pairs of buds recently that fall out almost instantly once I get moving. Raycon uses these gel tips that come in different sizes for a more comfortable fit, which for me means they don't budge when I start throwing weight. Lauren, try and get these to fall out of your ears. Oh. 
Also, since I basically always forget to charge my devices, the Everyday Earbuds 8-hour playtime and 32-hour battery life is very convenient for me. And if you're like me, you do hours of research before buying basically anything, so you'll be happy to read their more than 48,000 five-star reviews. They look good, they're comfortable, and they sound really good. So to pick up a set of Everyday Earbuds for yourself, click the link in my description or go to buyraycon.com slash laggershum to get 15% off your order. That's a good deal considering the Everyday Earbuds already started about half the price of other premium audio brands. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash laggershum for 15% off your purchase. Thank you, Raycon. About 25 to 30 minutes before I want to stretch my first pizza, I'll preheat my oven to its highest setting, in this case 550F 290C, and then set up a rack on the bottom third and then lay my pizza steel onto that. After 90 minutes at room temperature, my dough balls are warmed up, a bit more buoyant, and ready to be shaped. From that, I'll dust the top with some very finely ground cornmeal, and then using my dough scraper, I'll loosen it from the tray and flip it into my hand. Next, I'll give my cutting board a very liberal hit of the same fine grind cornmeal. Having fine cornmeal here is pretty important because the coarse grind stuff stands out too much texturally in the final pizza and it's not great. Once both sides of this dough are well dusted up with cornmeal, I'll degas the ball a lot. Again, if you have too much gas in this style of pizza dough, you can pretty easily get huge pizza ruining bubbles during the bake. Once that's fully degassed, I'll grab my rolling pin and start to roll this out. There really isn't much art and science to this part. You just need to roll this sheet of dough into something relatively flat and uniform that's about 14 inches wide. I'll keep rolling this for another 20 seconds or so. This takes about one minute in total. And that goes pretty fast with this tapered rolling pin. These things give me a really good feel for the type and amount of pressure that I'm putting down on this dough, and I highly recommend it. Once I've got this rolled into a 14 inch round, I'll confirm, that's about 35 centimeters for everybody who's cool and uses the metric system. Now, to make the stuffed part of this crust, I'm gonna lay down two inch batons of mild provolone cheese. Yes, this is the same product that I used for the shred, and again, it has a lot more dynamic flavor than full fat mozzarella in my opinion, so it makes a great crusting cheese. A lot of people use string cheese for stuffed crust, and that's that's a great option that's been well represented in many online videos already, so I thought I would use a cheese that has just as much stretchiness to it, but more of a sharp, interesting flavor. I'd say buy about three quarters pound per pizza from the deli unsliced and cut it into two inch batons like this. In total, you'll need about 16 to 20 batons per pizza, and this should be enough for two. Now, to seal this up, I'm going to use both hands and grab a three inch section of crust and then pull it over the cheese blocks and press firmly with my fingertips to get it stuck. Don't worry about full stickage on the first pass here, just get the crust folded over all the way. To finish, I'll come back using some firm thumb pressure to seal the crust to itself. If it's not sealed well, the cheese will leak onto the rest of the pizza. That's not really a bad thing, but you won't get the cheese stick vibe that we're going for. Once the crust is all sealed up and about 12 inches across like this, I'll carefully scoot it onto my pizza peel and then I'll lay down four large dollops or maybe five, six tablespoons of sauce and spread it edge to edge. I'm going a little bit heavy with the sauce here, especially around the edges to leave some extra to dress up the cheesy crust bites with. Behind the sauce, I'll sprinkle my full fat maz and pro alone blend, maybe about a cup or 100 grams in total. Once that's spread out, then I'll lay down some thin sliced pepperonis. I usually go for thick pepperoni on pizza, but this pizza is mainly about cheese, not meat. So in my mind, the ronis are here just to bring spicy hits of salty fat. Look at this thing. Throw a VHS filter on there. It looks exactly like a Pizza Hut commercial from the 90s. Real quick, since this pizza dough has an above average sugar content in it, I need to check the temperature of my steel. It's about 520 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a little bit too hot. So a little trick to cool the steel off is to put a cast iron pan in the spot where you're dropping the pizza for about a minute. When I come back and temp it a minute later, you can see that it's about 30 to 40 degrees cooler in that spot. And that's really gonna help keep the bottom from burning. Now I'm gonna give this pizza one last shimmy to make sure that it's not stuck. Then I'll load it into the oven right onto the steel and bake it for about six to seven minutes, depending on your oven. Since this crust is really heavy with cheese, it's gonna brown a lot faster on the bottom, but somehow slower on the top. So just keep a really close eye on it. Some darkness is going to happen and that's totally fine. It's not burnt in any way, it's just nice and crispy. After six minutes, I'm gonna pull this pizza out of the oven and take a look. The crust is perfectly brown. The peps are just starting to cup up and get crisp around the edges. And oh yeah, there's cheese in the crust. Never forget that. One more move here to totally gild this lily is to liberally brush the crust with garlic butter. To make that, I melted a whole stick of butter into a small saucepan and then added in five to six well-smashed cloves of garlic and fried it over low heat for about a minute and then let it sit off heat to infuse with all that garlickiness while I shaped my pizza. Now, instead of just cheesy crust, we have cheesy, garlicky butter crust. What's a few more hundred calories of fat on a pizza that's already at least 2,000?
Don't think about that. Think about how much fun it's gonna be to serve this to your friends or kids or whoever. In my opinion, soft, bready, kind of sweet pizza with cheese hidden inside of the crust is just a good way to spend your life. Look at that tunnel of cheese gooiness and tell me you're not running hot for it. I really hope you guys try this one soon. It's freaking easy. Let's eat this thing.